is uh, during this protocol, Stephanie, do they, is uh, mental health counseling a part of this program or do they just give them the drugs and uh, just say, oh, well, well, you're trans? No, I think this is the biggest scandal. You know, we've just heard um, that 35% of uh, teenage referrals to the Tavistock Clinic in London are autism spectrum children. I think this is a, this is a tip oh. and uh, Because autism, you know, autism spectrum children uh, do have uh, problems with gender. They have problems with fitting in. They have problems with, under, you know, a girl, an, a, an autism spectrum girl will have difficulty in understanding the very complicated social rules that girls have in their interaction. Right. And and they, they tend to be bullied, very highly bullied or to autistic kids. And they tend to be, have high suicidal ideation again. And they feel different, they feel left out. Any, any kid that feels different basically it, it is, is quite vulnerable to have it, to understand, to this model of understanding themselves. Right. Um, it, it's the kids I think that would have been goths and emos you know the, all the, right. yes, uh, that was from my era <laughs> yes yeah and and or punks or you know it, it's it's the kids or the you know the geeks um the computer nerds the all of those kids who don't fit into the kind of stereotypical boy and girl boxes oh um, my god i think that's what we're seeing that that and these these kids do tend to have uh pre-existing uh, mental health, psychological health issues. And again, that will um, inflate the suicidal ideation stats, which we're told are only because they're, they're trans, no other reason. Um, but it also makes them very, very vulnerable because essentially there is only a medical pathway. Once the diagnosis is gender dysphoria, and I hear from parents all the time, and I know this is happening in the UK and I, I hear from parents in the US as well in fact all over that's happening that no other um, mental health um, support is available once a child identifies as transgender they are they have to be affirmed and I know that there are, there are bans on conversion therapy um, gay conversion therapy um, and those and in the States, I think it's 12 states now in the US have added gender identity to the ban on conversion therapy. So what was gay conversion therapy, which I think everybody agrees is, is wrong. Um, there were some very cruel methods used to, in the past to you know, try to convert some of these same sex attractive to. Um, but now if, if you add gender identity, you're not allowed to convert a gender identity. Now there's no scientific evidence that we have this thing called a gender identity anyway. It's a made up concept, it's an idea um, that we have this sort of innate deep feeling of being male or female which is unrelated and completely independent of our biology and our socialization. Um, but, where, but the, that's also happened in, in the UK. The UK Council of Psychotherapies has added gender identity to what, what, the, what is called the Memorandum of Understanding on Conversion Therapy. And what that means is no therapist dare explore underlying issues with a client who says I'm transgender. So a girl, teenage girl, comes in, she's I'm a boy, and the therapist will just say, well, what pronouns he? You know, and... and affirm that the girl is a boy and therapists now if they explore under underlying issues and find out what you know what's led to that what's so that the child really understands what they're doing and what they mean by i'm a boy and what they uh, and, and what possible um background factors have led to that um and if that child then says oh no actually i am a girl i you know i got that uh, the therapist may it, it may be accused of, of of conversion therapy. Oh my God! Are you kidding me? No, this is this is going on. This is going on everywhere. It's uh, everywhere you. So turn. it's like you just being forced to go along with the delusions because I'm going to go out here and that's what I'm going to say. Since there's no scientific proof that any of this is real, these are no. delusions that are being promoted as reality 
groundless facts. There's nothing factual about it. And parents are being forced, railroaded by laws and threats to go along with this, yeah. with this stuff. That's what I'm hearing here. Yes, and, and the media presents parents who affirm their children as supportive and the children as brave. And so this message is being um, pushed on parents, you know, everywhere we look across the media. But when parents who don't, who, who refuse to believe that their daughter is now their son uh, or their son is now their daughter, um, are seen as bigoted, transphobic parents. And there's also, there's also the growing threat and fear of parents that their children may be taken away from them. Um, you know, transgender youth support groups are talking about getting social services involved if the parent doesn't affirm, as if there is only one way to support a child. So we have this real black and white. You either affirm your child or you're a nasty, bigoted, unsupported parent. Of course, you can support your child's gender expression. You can support your child to be who they are, but you can also um retain your adult responsibility to teach your child about reality uh, you know it, it's a it's a really um, really difficult road to take because these kids are being um told online in, in trans forums on tumblr and um various social media sites that if their parents don't fully affirm them and allow them to um, have medical transition then their parents are transphobic bigots and this is an attempt and you see this from um, transgender support groups it, that there's this attempt to separate you know to separate the child from the family and although you know that there are that there are some parents who are horrible I know you know but most parents we have to um, we have to support most parents or, or acknowledge that most parents have the best interests of their child at heart that they will want to do their best for their child in right. any other area the parent who does research the parent who really looks into it who looks at the side effects of these medications who recognizes that their daughter taking testosterone at age 16 she will have irreversible uh, effects on her body that she will never be able to change back um, parents who understand about the development of the adolescent brain, um, parents who are really informed and cannot support this um, for their children, but want, to, but are trying to support their children to to hold the space, to allow them to express themselves, to keep up communication, keep up a good relationship. It's a really difficult tightrope to walk. Um, parent, uh, you know, families are 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 going to hell because there's no support anywhere around them they go to um in this country it's cams the mental health services where their child will be affirmed parents can't find therapists and therefore they have to try and find a private therapist who will um explore issue, underlying issues rather than simply affirm their child but you know they, 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 these parents are have nowhere to turn they are being told by mental health services, you must affirm your child. Um, what a nightmare. It, it, that wouldn't it, have went down at my house, though. I could just imagine yeah. my brother coming in and talking about I'm a girl and my father saying I'll girl you. And so it's like, we, you know, we didn't. Well, it, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it, is, it does feel like being in an Orwellian nightmare. It does. Everybody is saying your daughter is now your son and isn't he brave? And... Uh, you know, giving all this attention to your brave son. And I'm hearing this from parents that um, they, you know, that, that, that they as the parent have to sort of shut up and be really, really careful because if they're seen as transphobic, they feel under, uh, you know, serious threat. We also have What about the children, Stephanie? Okay, so... That's a very small segment of the population. What about all the children who identify as what they are having these kids forced on them? Like, I, have a, I would feel really bad about my daughter having to be in a locker room seeing some guy's genitals, and even though he says he's a girl, he has all the equipment that can sexually assault anybody in there. And this has happened in a prison recently here in the yes. United States. This guy said he was and promptly raped four women in the prison and um 
you know, this is, this is a, a fear that I think a lot of parents have, and it's confusing millions of children who identify with, you know, what they physically look like. Is anybody focusing well, on the damage that's being done to these children? Yeah, and I wouldn't even say that, that kids identify, you know, like I, 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 as a child, I didn't identify as a girl. I knew yeah. I was a girl. I think this yeah. whole idea that we identify as, is, is rubbish. You know, we, 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 don't identi we don't identify, do we? We know that we are, but we don't, I mean, I certainly don't necessarily identify with feminine things or the position of women in society. I don't identify with all of that. You know, I don't right. identify with gender stereotypes. Uh, I know that I'm a woman because I'm biologically female. But yes, I think it's another thing that, that I think we are creating mental health problems because we're, in, one, we're encouraging children to explore their gender identity. So we're, we're saying to children, you've all got a gender identity and it, it's really good to explore your gender identity. Well, what that means is that all these kids are looking at their personalities and all their interests. And thinking, Does that mean I'm a boy or a girl or, you know, and, and that kind of inward looking, you must relate everything to, uh, to your gender. I think it is is really uh, unhealthy. Right. Um, but for children who, um, so for particular, actually boys and girls. I mean, I've heard it from both sides that that boys, uh, you know, you, you know, you know that your classmate is one sex, and they come back the following term as the opposite sex, and they come into your locker room or your toilet, and you, and you're supposed, to, and all the teachers are saying he is a, you know. This teenage boy who you, you know is your classmate is now a girl, and you have to say, "Yes, she's a girl." It's gaslighting. You know, we we all know that actually he's male, he's a right. boy, he's a teenage boy, but we all have to play the game and say, "No, she's a girl," and feel suddenly magically comfortable about a biological male getting changed in front of us. Or, or watching it, or, or us getting changed in front of in front of him, and it's not so much. I mean, I know that that if ever we talk about this aspect, uh, we're told that we're scaremongering, that that, um, or we're accusing trans kids of being sexual predators, and the fact is that you know we we, we with with males we don't know. It's the reason we 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 have sex segregated facilities in the first place, but. For, for privacy for both sexes, but also for girls, that added safety. Correct. Um, and so, you know, a, a, a boy who identifies as a girl may still be heterosexual and may still fancy girls, and that still might lead to something. In fact, I have heard stories. If, you know, trans kids are not magically um, angels. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, right. as, you know, we we we, we, we can't assume that. And we're not accusing trans kids of being sexual predators. I think the, mo the more important thing here is, is one that all children have a right to have boundaries with the opposite sex. And, and that's an inviolable right in my, in my view that, that, you have a, that you are able, but particularly for girls, that girls especially have the right to say no to males in their private spaces where they're vulnerable, where they're getting undressed or using the toilet. They have the right to their boundaries and they have the right to express those boundaries. Um, but calling a boy a girl, they, they, they're suddenly transphobic and they're being, these girls are being called bigoted for having those healthy boundaries. Right. Where, well, you know, they're, well, they, they have a right to those boundaries. And what really worries me is that girls are being shamed out of having any boundaries at all or using their intuition. So if any boy, we, you know, we must say he's a girl, a any boy, any man, right. say I'm a woman and a girl must accept you're a woman. Otherwise it's transphobic and bigoted. Exactly. That's absolute opposite message we should be giving to girls. Girls are too polite anyway. Girls get themselves into, into dangerous situations because they're too polite because they're worried about hurting his feelings, they will put themselves in risky situations. And we, we, you know, we need to be teaching our girls, no, 
risk hurting his feelings. Don't put yourself in a compromising or risky situation. We're doing the opposite here. We're saying you're not allowed. In this one particular case, any man who says he's a woman, you have to accept him as a woman and therefore invite him into your personal private space. That yeah, is see, really I, I disagree with that so much. Yeah. Well, well, this means that girl, it's not just here and now in this school. It means that girls are being groomed into pushing down their instincts about some, somebody who's male. Um, and that will affect them in relationships outside of school as they grow up, that they, uh, you know, that, that they do not have the right to question any man who says, I'm a woman. That is dangerous to girls. <sighs> This is yeah, frightening. It's not, it's, not, it's not good news, is it? No, and it is something that I've, you know, worried about myself because it seems, you know, any man could just wake up one morning, put on a wig, even with his full beard and everything, you know, put on a wig and mm -hmm. some kind of dress he got at Goodwill or whatever and walk around into women's spaces and say that I'm a woman. And, yeah. you know, where are you a woman? You, you're still a guy. So yes. what part of this with your beard and your everything, your testosterone makes your, you a woman? Your penis. You know, exactly. Yes. I'm yes. like, you know, how does this work? I feel like I'm in that book I used to read when I was a little kid called The Emperor's New Clothes, where everyone says, yeah. oh, my God, his clothes are so fabulous. And the guy is just butt naked. And it's like, yeah. you know, and it took a child to say, no, he has no clothes on. This is the yeah. same thing. You're yeah. not a woman. So... I'm just really, this thing is really bothering me and I'm glad you made yourself a Well, yes, and you know, question. trans people deserve respect, deserve human rights and des deserve not to be discriminated against. And I think, you know, people speaking out, I think everybody, uh, this is not transphobic. This, yes, you have a right to live in safety and peace and have access to the same rights as everybody else. I think everybody is, but you, but, but just to, actually force everybody to deny biological reality um, and I think actually um, the older or you know uh, transsexuals do not agree with this with this gender identity uh, the sort of you know old-fashioned transsexuals it was a it was seen as a condition that uh, was, was quite rare but um, deserved compassion and right we allowed for it because as a society we, we we look after the most vulnerable people and i absolutely you know that but that's a different thing to what's happening now now we're right. being told that uh, gender identity um biological sex doesn't exist it, it's irrelevant it, it's we've made that up it doesn't exist uh, women have penises men have vaginas you know it's, it's like bi male and female biological sex is, is an illusion and this somehow this sort of magical spirit soul be you know gender identity <laughs> in our heads that, uh, is is the reality and that goes for all of us uh, so we can only be a woman now if we identify as a woman we are you know we're, we're called cisgendered women because we must have a gender identity to be a woman yeah, well, I, 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 re, I rebuke that because I don't want anybody who's not like me uh, telling me what I am. You don't get to call me Especially sis. somebody male. Um, exactly. They have too many names for us now that are unflattering and derogatory and downright insulting. And to me, that's mm -hmm. just another one of them. And I, so anybody, uh, no, you don't get to call me that. I'm the woman and you're not. That's how that goes. Yes. And woman, <laughs> so, the, word, the word woman doesn't need a prefix. You know. Exactly. A, a, well, you know, I don't want to keep you here all day because I definitely could ask you question after yeah. question. Yeah. But um, I really wanted to know, um, for parents, you know, I'm sure this is going to be a wake-up call for a lot of people that, you know, you're sharing information that people just really did not know how deep this goes. So mm -hmm. if someone wants to find out more information or become involved in a pushback movement, what should they do? I think, well, uh, go and have a look at transgendertrend.com, have a read of it. Um, have a look at Fourth Wave Now, excellent. Um, it's fourthwavenow.com. Okay. Um, 
which is an excellent site in the States. Um, she is a brilliant writer and you will be absolutely shocked by what you read on that website. I think parents do have power. We're seeing pushbacks from parents in the States, in Canada, in the UK. Um, we've published a, a schools resource pack on transgender trend for parents to take into their child's school. Um, and our schools packet explains the difference between gender and sex very clearly. Because I think a lot of what's, hap what's happening is also because of this confusion between those two words. Right. And gender, you know, they, they don't mean the same thing. We're, we're men and women based on our biological sex. That's, that's just fact. That's what those words mean. Gender is a social construction. It's, it's masculinity and femininity. It's how, you know, it's, it's how women should behave and how men should right. behave. It's stereotypes, really. Um, and of course, that changes over history and, you know, different things are expected. In different cultures, right. And in different cultures. Uh, so so the, the Transgender Trend Schools Pack explains the difference between sex and gender and encourages schools to teach children the difference and to allow to break to challenge gender stereotypes to allow children to express themselves and not be restricted by gender stereotypes but also to recognize and respect the differences between the two sexes you can do both things and so helping children to realize that challenging gender stereotypes doesn't mean they have to change sex because they're only moving from one stereotype to the opposite stereotype. Yeah, that's what that's like. What do you mean there's no stereotype? You're yeah. you're perpetuating yeah. it with this switch. It's it's just reinforcing stereotypes to to think that you're a boy because you like having short hair and tattoos. You know, that's a stereotype. You right. you you can be female and still do that. You know it's, um so yeah I'd really encourage parents, you know, have a look. You can download it for free from the website. Um okay. I would really encourage parents to challenge their schools. I think when you talk about this issue to other adults, you know, at the school gates, it's really scary because uh, people who, who question it are painted as bigots. So you have, to, I think you do have to be careful you, you, when you start talking to people about it. But what I think you'll find is that other people have concerns too and are also right. not speaking up. So just, you know, approach the subject, talk about it, be a bit careful. But I think you'll find that there'll be other parents who feel the same way as you. And when there's a group of you, then, then you can ask your school, what are you teaching about gender identity in this school? What are your policies on locker rooms and toilet bathrooms? You know, right. uh, and, and start to say, we do not want this. We want our... You know, we want our child's boundaries to be respected and we want children to be taught that boundaries are important and they have a right to those boundaries. So, we, you know, once you get together with other parents, parents do have power. Schools will listen to a group of parents. So, so that's what I would also say, whenever you see anything, you know, say something in the, in the media. And I think uh, when you see a completely cheerleading child transition piece on TV or in a newspaper, write in write your comment um complain to the editor say we want balance we want balance right. reporting what are the dangers of these drugs we're giving to children what are the side effects what's where's the research to show that they're effective and they're not harmful you know actually start asking your media um these questions and don't put up with the the one-sided media coverage well, I appreciate it, Stephanie. Um, this is mind boggling. I'm going to do and try to get this online as quickly as possible so that everybody can yeah. see this great interview. You've given me a lot of food for thought. By the way, I don't mind being called transphobic. Right? I, to me, it's like, what? So, you know, it's like, you I, call I, me well, that. How is that hurting me? Is it affecting my bank account? Is it changing anything in my life at all? But it's like, it's not a fear of being trans. It's, phobia is the wrong word. It's a concern for what yeah. that is doing to the mind of my child and other children who don't understand what's going on. That's not a phobia. That is parental 
concern. And so yes. I think there's a big yes. difference that people should. And every parent that. has the right to voice those concerns without being labeled. Exactly. I'll give it's you like, I don't want my child to be around people who do drugs or, you know, who cut and all this kind of stuff. You know, there's certain things as a parent, you want to have the time to explain to your child what's, what that thing is. And this is being, this right is being denied parents. It's just being yeah, and you don't want your child to, it's like being taught creationism in school. You, know, you, you don't want your child being taught an ideology in schools and uh, but the, an ideology disguised as fact right you don't want that you do, you know that's not education you want your child to be taught facts uh, I've got another website for you it's a new okay. one it's, it's, I, and I'll read this I've just got it written down here because I've only just been sent it but it's professionals, it's clinicians. So it oh. might be interesting for your viewers to see this. This is um, uh, professionals who are speaking out. Okay. And you. Uh, so this is at uh, gdworkinggroup.org. So GD, it must be gender dysphoria, gdworkinggroup.org. Okay. Have a look at that because some there'll be some interest. I know I know there'll be some interesting pieces on there uh, from the point of view of professionals. And I think you know the reason I set up Transgender Trend was that there was nothing online, not, apart from Fourth Wave Now, the website that I told you you must look at. Um, but there was nothing to help par parents were looking for information. All they could find was. Um, trans propaganda, right? So you must affirm your child, and this is, uh, you know, this is innate. They they are trans, and um, so I set up Transgender Trends to provide an alternative source, which was evidence based and you know based on information and research uh, to help parents see that there was an alternative out there. So I think for parents who are worried, this new website of profession professionals will reassure them that um you know that that's excellent yeah yeah well i thank you thank you so much for stopping being you know she's in the uk and i'm here in the u.s so we had to really work to coordinate our times and get this make this happen but i'm so glad that you uh worked with me on this stephanie i really 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 more than you know appreciate right. it well, thank you for inviting me on. I think it's a really important subject that most people are avoiding. So I really appreciate you inviting me on and talking about it. Thank you. Oh, this is, this is dynamic. Thank you. And we will speak soon. And I will send, yes. be sure to send you the link when everything Fantastic. is, is, thank is you. edited. All right. Thank you. And bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.